I'm Beatrice Verhoeven with The Wrap, and thank you guys so much for taking the time to chat with me. And I wanted to start off with, you know, a very simple question. How did you guys get involved? Who signed on first? Give me the whole spiel of that. Uh, Clea sent me the script first, because um, <clears throat> I'm the star of the movie in this case. <laughs> because... <laughs> and then I uh, cast the other parts. <laughs> <laughs> no. So uh, basically, the script is really beautiful. Uh, Clea wrote it with Mary Holland, um, so it is imbued with both of of them, their sort of like soulful natures. And not only is it very, very funny, it feels really lived in and, re and reflective of something really familiar to me and a lot of people that has not been um, evident in like really big commercial rom-com type type movies. And um, it, it it was so uh, balanced and really intelligently sort of constructed. I was just like, gosh, I, I, I know that I'm gonna have a nice, lovely, warm, and possibly like transformative time on set making this movie. Um, and it was all of those things. I'm so happy I got to meet everyone. It was like the best group and the best experience. Yeah, and then Christian cast me and it was so great to be invited into the movie. Uh, no, I found about it after obviously sorry jokes aside she had been cast but i i read the script and i just finished shooting uh something very rigorous and hard and this just seems like the nicest possible thing you could walk into both the people that i knew were involved which was clea who i, I love and Kristen, who i hadn't met yet but really admired and was like oh yeah she seems like of course i want to do this movie with her if he's doing it um and also just this sort of vision for the making of the film that Clea had this very sort of queer female crew and if not then lots of really lovely people all around it just felt like the most ideal version of making a movie all oh, the nice looking cat oh hi Shasha <laughs> yeah special <laughs> guest <laughs> Thanks, sweetheart you have both um, touched on this, but um, you know, this is the first queer first welcome from any major studio, which is great, but it's also 2020. Um, you know, how do you guys feel about this film being groundbreaking in that sense when it is 2020 and this should have happened years and years and years ago? As somebody who really enjoys a lot of comfortability and like shameless freedom to be myself and really enjoy that with the people that. I love the most, um, not only romantically, um, but just sort of whatever. Um, so like, I think it's really important to uh, kind of just realize how fringy that is. And it's not completely across the board normal for everyone. And um, the movie really broadcasts how everyone's coming out story is totally there as an individual. And there are so many different versions of that story and there is, a, thankfully, like, you know, we've progressed a lot. There, there are a lot of people that, that don't live in like fear and anxiety, but there are so many people that do. And so if this movie like allows them to laugh at things that are normally really painful, it's a nice welcome feeling. And also it's a bit of an invitation to anyone who maybe still harbors judgment to realize that like love really does look the same on everyone when it's like true and coming from you know a real place blah blah uh yeah how does this movie portray same-sex couples differently in your opinion to the previous you know projects we've seen it's a really safe genre because you know that everything's going to work out okay in the end and to put uh, queer women at the center of that or any queer couple that historically in in media representations of those relationships i mean clea just said it so beautifully that you know, the sort of best version that we have most of the time is these two people that have sort of repressed lives meet, get to be the fullest versions of themselves and then sort of kiss goodbye and never speak to each other again. Um, and that's like one of the most positive depictions that we have of queer love. And then there's all of these other sort of tortured or, or like truly tragic renditions of love stories or of just their existence. And so to take this thing that's been you know, uh, unfairly burdened with tragedy and to put it in this genre that you're like, oh, I know that we'll be scared a little bit that they won't end up together, but they will because that's the movie is um, it's just such a safe, nice thing to do. 
Yeah, I mean, going off of that, you know, you both just mentioned it is a rom-com. You, you kind of know that things will work out, you know, and in this case, um, Clea said it in The Advocate, so I'm not going to think it's a spoiler, but um, Abby and Harper do end up together. Um, so there's this, you know, Christmas movie, light aspect, and then there are these heavier moments. Um, what was it like kind of like ping-ponging between those moments for you guys? It was always so easy because I um, never wanted to stop laughing with my new friends that I loved so much. And then a scene would come up and it would be like sad or alienating or uh, difficult. And it, it really hurt to <laughs> step away from like, um, you know, the joy of, a, of it all, but that's it, that's life. You know, it's all balanced. I was so happy that when I was sad, it really was like extremely painful. Also, it's kind of true of being with your family in the holidays is that things are like really beautiful and cookie cutter and you're all sort of like having this sort of manic fun that you're together again. And then the next minute, everybody's in a separate room crying. <laughs> yeah. it's like somebody passed <laughs> the water rudely. <laughs> so it's 